be working on today. So let's just confirm that everybody has everything that you need on your tabletop. We're going to be working on and uh, learning our brush stroke techniques. We're going to be learning our brushes and teaching you how to do that and why it's important. So you have three brushes. Mine are big, so you can see on the screen. Yours might be tiny, okay? Um, we usually don't have these brushes, but these are a little bit more expensive brushes and I always use the cheapy ones, but I thought, no, let's use you know the big stuff, the good stuff this year. Um, so let's take good care of them. You have three, you have an oval, you have a flat, and you have a pointed. I, I use, I'm using the big, big, big brushes so everybody can see, but you should have one of each, okay? When you kind of do this to them, not that we should be touching the bristles, it'll smooth them out and you can really see the pointed one, the, round, the, the flat and the oval one. If you look at them, they're pinched right here. The round one is not pinched, it's just a cylinder. Okay, so that's how you can tell the difference. So you have three, so if you need to change it out, feel free to do so. Your cups, both of them need to have water. You need to have a, a palette of paint, okay? Any color's fine, and I forgot to bring mine from home. I promise I'll bring them, but um, if you don't have a favorite color, you can share for now. You have a strip of paper. We're gonna do our line work on here. Mine's in color, yours in black and white, I apologize, but um, this is the handout that you have for your face painting. By the time we get done, you'll be able to paint and replicate any and all of these, and many more. We're doing these designs. And then you have your face chart, your head sheet. You have an adult face, and then you have kid faces, because typically kid faces are who you paint. I'm not saying that adults don't, adults don't get it, but. Um, and then don't forget to randomly set up your table. If you're right-handed, your supplies are on your right-hand side. If you're left-handed, your supplies are on your left-hand side. So don't forget to be taking pictures of your setups and things of the sort, which you're doing in class. One year we had our coach, Coach Waller. He saw that we were doing face painting. His little son's birthday party came about and he hired two of our students to do face painting at his, at his the birthday party. We have a former student that um, does, she's really loved it, really good at it. And um, she does face paintings, or she did, I don't know now, but she did face paintings at birthday parties and she'd make a lot of money at birthday parties. So family would um, hire her, pay her, and then she would get birthday cake and get fed and so on. Who doesn't like birthday cake, right? So that's always a good plus. It's a nice little side gig to have. Um, plus face painting and all that helps you um, be better. So when you do makeup and nail art, all the stuff that you learn today is going to trickle, like henna will always trickle over to following skills and techniques, okay? So don't feel like, oh, okay, henna, we're done with it. Everything I learned, that's it. I'm not gonna ever use it again. Yeah, we'll talk about it again next year, okay? Same thing with this. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do this flower for today, okay? But before that, we're gonna learn a few things. So you have your paper here, here, and I know I need a manicure, sorry. Um, you have your yellow paper you're going to be working over. If it seeps through the yellow paper, it's okay, but that's your safety net, okay? Now we have um, our Snazaroo. Snazaru is a really good brand. You can find these if you want to buy your own set on Amazon, but you can also find them on um, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Walmart, stuff like that, okay? So this is not alcohol activated. Some paints, you sit there and you're like, whoosh, and like nothing comes off of the palette. One, it might have a plastic on it. We've done that before, right? You know, like when it's new take the plastic off and then if it doesn't come out a paint doesn't come up with water it means it needs alcohol to activate it these don't these are just for kids and so they don't okay but like all the special effects makeup stuff you see online and all those little square palettes and all that they use alcohol to pick up the paint okay and it has to be like closer to 100 percent alcohol they like the 65 doesn't really work Okay, so we have three brushes here, and we use these a lot, so they're pretty, they're pretty used up. So we have uh, two cups of water. One will be clean and stay clean till the end, till our, where we do our cleanup, and then the other one you can use. So you can push one to the side, so it's not in your way. Now, brushes. 
I'm gonna do the square brush. This is the brush, this is the handle. This is the tail of the brush, okay? This is the crimp, okay? This piece right here, the metal piece, is what holds the handle and the fibers together. The, if you go to like Hobby Lobby and you go down the paint brush aisle, there's some paint brushes like $60 and you're like, wow. It's because they're bristles that they're made of. It's really expensive. They absorb well and things of the sort. So they hold pigment better. And you'll see what I mean when we use these. I thought these were really high fancy. No. Okay, because when I started painting with it, I was like, ooh. That, the reviews were not right on these brushes. Um, and so you, you pay for what you get what you pay for for the most part, right? Unless if you're ordering from Amazon sometimes. So the actual crimp, there's crimps here. Okay, and that holds the uh, wood, sometimes it's plastic or metal, but it holds that to this barrel here. And then the crimp here, which with the square one is flat, that holds the bristles inside. There's glue in here on both ends. So if you submerge this into the water like so, and it's past this point here, one is gonna crack your paint and your wood but two, it's gonna dilute the glue and with time it's gonna fall apart. So your $60 brush that you just paid for, it's not worth $60 anymore, okay, because it's broken. So keep that in mind. These brushes, most of them have already been used, okay, because last class, but they're new. Some of them are not, have not been used. So when it goes from the manufacturer to you, to the store to you, when you open it, they're hard. And they're, they're like, on them poke you sometimes. So what it is, is they have a type of gel over them. So they are nice and, and sleek and they like, they're shaped. Once you get them and use them, they look like my hair by the end of the time you use them, like shh, everywhere crazy, right? When your brush gets like this, like that, right? You take a little bit, I like uh, mousse instead of gel because some gels are really thick and flaky. Um, but I like to put a little bit of mousse over my brushes and let them dry like this. And then next time I'm going to use them, especially like eyeliner brushes or brow brushes, because you use them so much, they start to fray at the tip. When you clean them, put a little bit of mousse, lay them down, and then they're perfect each time after you use it, okay, after you do that treatment. There's always oils on our hands. We touch our foreheads, we touch doorknobs, we touch toilet, br toilet flushers, and sometimes we're going to wash our hands and it's gross. Not only because your hands are unsanitary most of the time, right? Unless if you wash them and don't touch anything nowadays, but there's oils on there that you, if you touch the bristles, you transfer the oils over to the bristles. When there's oil in the bristle, and then you take the, that oil and place it over the brush. Sometimes the product does not, does not, is not friend with oils, like oil and water and separate. So then it doesn't transfer to your brush. And then when you're painting there, there's not that much paint on your brush. Does that make sense? So don't touch the bristles on any brush ever. Okay, that's just a rule of thumb for brushes. What we're going to do today is we're going to play with all three of them because you're new to these brushes. And we want to learn what do these brushes do for us? How can I use them and what designs do they create? So that when I'm coming to a birthday and I'm going to charge a dollar for that or, you know, $10 for the, li the, the lion, it's a... Yeah, it's a lion. No, it's a tiger. Sorry. Um, right? Yeah, it's a tiger. So if I'm charging $10 for this, I can't have the little kid come up to me and then I'm like, huh, what brush should I do? And I start working and then like doesn't come out like the picture. And I'm like, okay, it's pretty, you know, and the kid's crying, the mom's mad. I need to know what my tools, products, and all that do for me. Oh, yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, bye. Two seconds. Bye. Bye. your products work so that's what we're doing today we're exploring okay so we're gonna start with our square if it's new first thing you oh and paper towel everybody have paper towel to pass down your roll of paper towel I'm sorry I apologize and fold it now y'all these are y'all know these are cheap paper towels you want to use the bounty paper towels when you're working with paint 
uh, face painting. So you want to take your brush and you just want to, mine has water because I used it last class period. Yours might have water, but you just want to break that gel coating and just go sweep it back and forth very gently. Okay. Dip your brush into the water and the belly of the brush. Okay. So if you look at your foot, you've got the toes and you've got the heel when you, and the middle is the belly, right? So when you look at the brush, the tip of the toe, the heel is this piece here where it's crimped. The belly is the middle. So toe, belly, heel. Okay. All right, so dip that in the brush into the water. You're going to dip the brush into the side of the cup. The belly of the brush is going to be swayed back and forth like so. That's helping get rid of that coat of gel. If you have any pigment or paint or anything, that helps to get rid of that. But you're just swirling using the outer skirt or outer rim of the cup or the walls of the cup to move your brush. You never want to go like this. You want to stamp it down. You don't want to do that because you mess up your brushes. So swipe the belly on the rim of the cup or just go back and forth on the side where there's no water. And it will pull all the excess water out. Go ahead and dip into your, your product. You're going to go front and back front you're sweeping front and back I mean do it on top of here front and back I should have got a different color it's hard to see front and back front and back right dip a little bit of water and front and back front and back I like to have a water bottle and I squirt I spray water over my paints so I don't get too crazy much water and it stays nice and wet and it doesn't dry on me it's just easier when I'm working so I'm loading what I'm doing right now is I'm loading my brush I loaded the brush on the top and the bottom of the belly of the toe. But now I want to get inside of the brush. So how do I do that? I'm going to put my brush down and I'm going to show you on a paper towel. Put my brush down and I'm going to fan it like this sideways. And that is how you spread the bristles out so that paint gets on the inside of the brush. So I'm going to grab a little bit of water, push my belly down and I'm going to make Fan it from right to left on one side of the belly and fan it from right to left on the other side of the belly. Okay? Now, when I do that, don't push too hard because then you're going to fray the bristles. You want to be gentle. Very, very gentle. Okay? So my brush is now fully loaded. By the way, this uh, does come off of uh, clothing. I already got it on my sleeve. But it does come off of clothing, okay? All right. So we're going to take our brush. And at the edge and the top, we're just going to push down and lift up. And again, we're going to push down and lift up. When I push down, right, and I see water on the top of my belly and my brush, that means my brush is too wet and I have too much water. How do I fix that? I take my paper towel, bounty paper towel, not this kind because this kind is not good. And I'm going to tap the belly of my brush on my towel my paper towel and it's going to pick up not not necessarily the tip of it but like the be the belly and the foot so it's picking up all the excess moisture the excess water that you have on your brush so that now when i go down and i push my brush down i have less water that deposits okay go and put load your brush again sweep over your palette right left right left be gentle you can go fast but just be gentle and now push the bristle down and now pick up and you see there's less water it's less liquidy now because it's got less water you should tap the water out so you need to know how much water does this brush absorb are my bristles uh, animal bristles are they nylon uh, what kind of plastic are they? Are they, I've heard of them, human hair. There's all kinds of different bristles, okay? So which one does this, these, do the brushes that you're working with have? How much water do, absor do they absorb? How much paint do they absorb? So that way I know if I've got to paint this whole tiger here, I need a brush that's going to absorb a lot of paint, okay? So I need a good brush so I don't keep 
dipping into my brush, uh, into my paint, and then paint, and then dip into my paint, and it takes me longer, okay? Time is money, so you gotta, you gotta work fast, okay? So then I'm gonna do the same thing to the next two. Take your oval brush, dip it into your water, sway, sway, sway on the side belly of the brush against the side, inside walls of the cup, dip it into your paint, sweep it side to side, right, left, right, left, do the sweep sideways to load the inside of the brush gently in the shape of a, um, of a rainbow, okay? And then you're going to tap down on your paper and pick up. And tap down and pick up. Tap your uh, brush, the belly, against the paper towel so that it absorbs the liquid. Load without adding water, load your brush. And then tap down again and pick up, and then tap down again and pick up. And take a notice on how less wet your brush is after you've tapped off on your napkin. You get more of a stronger pigment. Now imagine, this is a paper, imagine on a little kid's cheek. If it's too wet, that paint is going to run down the cheek, right? And if they're wiggling and moving around like little kids do, good luck, okay? All right, we're gonna load our last brush. So let's break the seal on our pointed brush. Especially if it's brand new, you're gonna sway it on the inside wall of the cup with some water loaded. You're going to sweep it. Now, because this brush at the heel between the bristles and the metal, it's not pinched, it's not crimped, it's, it's cylinder. You can even feel like it moves a little bit more even. Okay, so you're just gonna have to rotate the brush because you don't flip it over the cylinder, okay? Load it, and then tap down, pick up, tap down, pick up. Tap the brush on the napkin to absorb the liquid, the excess liquid. You can even roll it if you wanted to. And on your napkin, you can see, because on your napkin, you're dropping off some of the paint, but you can see where there's water that's being absorbed. So, but not adding more water, but add more uh, of your palette of the paint. Swipe side to side. Rotate the brush as you're swiping because there's no top or bottom. And now tap your brush down and pick up and down and pick up and see how much more coverage you get, how much more pigment you lay down. And that's simply because there's less water on your brush. Now. We have three different shapes of brushes. Let's absor observe the shapes that create are created by the brush. Flat edge, curved edge, curved edge with the point. Okay. So we're gonna be working back and forth with our, um, I dropped my paper over here. We're gonna be working back and forth with our brush. I threw that away. Okay, so what we're going to do is now we're going to take our square brush. We're going to load it. Try not to add any water so we have pure pigment. And we're going to take our rectangle, our square brush, our flat brush, and just swipe down and stop. Right? And then go from the bottom to the top and go swipe up, trying to mimic to get full coverage and let go, right? Your goal is to get one solid line. You can do that by swiping the opposite direction. Then get your oval brush. Don't add water, just add pigment because you want nice and thick paint on there. And you're going to push your brush down and swipe down and pick up and then turn your brush onto the other side to the other belly and push the brush align it line it up push the brush down expand the bristles and swipe up and pick up you have a solid line same thing let's go to our pointed brush do not add water just add pigment paint product whatever you're working with Push the bristles down, 
Sweep down and pick up. Flip your brush around. Push it down. Try to line it up. No, I didn't turn my brush, did I? I don't think I turned it. And same thing and lift up. So, if I'm going to make this snake or the web of the Spider-Man, which brush, now that I know what they do for me, which brush do I think in my mind I need to grab to make these lines? So now you know. Yeah, absolutely, right? Because of the shape of the line. Now, if I want to do something like the rainbow, which line am I going to grab? Which brush am I going to grab? The square, right? But, so I'm using the big, big brushes, right? Y'all some of you guys that have the tiny brushes? If that little baby's got a little cheek, I'm not going to use these big brushes, right? So if I have a set of 12 big square brushes, I need to know what size line each one of them makes. So when I have them out and I have a little baby coming, I use a little brush. Or when I have an adult coming, I was like, oh, no, I need the big brush, right? So learn your tools. Just like with eyeshadows and big eyebrows, little eyebrows, things of the sort. Okay. All right. So next thing that we're going to do is the pushing down of the bristles. So you've noticed when you push the, oh, so you have your bristles, right? When you push the bristles down, they, the brush down, the bristles expand. And when you lift it up, the bristles go back, right? So we're going to do that now. Pick up a little bit of water with your square brush. You're going to pick up some paint, load it up. If you picked up too much water, just tap the belly on the paper towel and add some more pigment. And we're going to see what kind of, how thick, how wide we can get with this brush and how thin we can get with it. So we're going to push the brush down, push, squeeze, oops, squeeze the bristle, push it down, push it down, expand it, make it fan out, and then lift up. How thin can you go? That's how thin I can go. Reload your brush. Let's try it one more time. Okay. We're going to push our brush down. We're going to really push it. We're going to try to fan out the bristles as much as, as they will expand. I will swipe and then slowly start to lift up. And how thin can I go? There you go. Okay. A little shaky, but that's okay. So now let's go with our oval brush. Get your oval brush. A teeny bitty bit of water. Add some pigment. Tap it off on your napkin if you've got too much pigment. Okay. You're going to push the bristles down against the paper with the heel push and try to make it a fan try to fan out those bristles as much as you can swipe it and then carefully slowly start to lift up how thin can you get the line okay do it again load your brush one more time you're going to push the br brush down expand the bristles as you swipe downward and then you're going to lift the brush up. And how thin can you go? Okay. And you're going to do the same thing with the last pointed brush. Pick up water. Just a little bit. Itty bitty little bit. Load your brush. If it's too much water, tap off on your napkin. You're going to push your brush down try to expand the bristles as much as they'll expand drag the brush slowly lift the brush and see how thin you can go do that twice don't forget with this one as you're roll you're loading your brush roll it since there's not a top and a bottom lay the brush down push the heel down try to expand those bristles as much as possible Lift up as you come to the end and see how thin you can go. So now I created a solid line going into painting in different directions. Now I know what shape it's creating. Now I know how much water or paint it'll hold. Okay.
Give her a bite just a second to finish, finish up. Now, what if I turn my brush a different direction? Let's see. Let's take our square brush, add a little bit of water, load it up. So I know what it's going to look like right here if I just hold it flat, belly up, belly down. Okay? If you run out of space, you can flip it over. I'm going to flip it over. It's probably a bad idea, but I'm going to flip it over. Okay. Okay. If I just bring my brush and I just use the corner edge, I'm just going to get a rectangle or a square flat edge. What if I take my brush and instead of holding it straight, what if I angle my brush like this? Ah. Right? It's at an angle now. What if I take my brush and put it on its side instead of on its belly? So here we go. Oh, right. I just got three different brush strokes from one brush. Let's not mention all the degrees in between, right? Same thing. Let's try that with our oval. Let's see what we get with our oval. Our, oh, dang it, our oval brush, straight down, let's turn it at an angle, and let's turn it on its side. Same thing, gives us different things. The round one, it's round. Doesn't matter how you turn it, it's, it's round. <laughs> it doesn't have a flat belly, so it's just going to give you the same thing. Okay, what we're going to do now is teach you how to clean your brushes. So what you're going to do is you're going to one, paint off as much paint as you can on your paper to try to get rid of as much of the paint as possible. You can do this on the napkin or you can do this on the paper towel. I'm sorry, or paper. You're going to take your brush, you're going to dip it into your water, and you're going to slide the side of the belly on the inside wall of the cup, not on the floor of the cup, not on the bottom of the cup. Okay? Do both sides, one belly and then the opposite belly. You're then going to take your paper towel, and you're going to swipe. If when you swipe, your brush is dirty, that means it's not clean. you got to keep going. Swipe, 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 pull the brush out, wipe on the paper towel, put it to the side. You're then going to get your clean water, and you're going to swipe, swipe, swipe the brush. Now that you've gotten most of the paint out of the brush, and now you're just doing like the minor details, swipe on the inside belly, the belly on the inside of the cup. The cup has little ridges, so you can go from the bottom to the top, and you'll hear the little click, 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 right? That helps. And then you're going to come and wipe on the belly of the brush off on the napkin. This, you take your napkin like this and you fold, you pinch the brush and pull out. Like so. That's going to help. Okay, get all that liquid out. And that's how you clean your brushes. Please do that to the other two brushes. The water goes down the drain, trash in the trash. You're welcome to leave that yellow paper on your tabletop for the next group, unless if it's crazy dirty. And you may get ready to go once you are done with your brush cleaning. Does anyone have any questions? Again, you can get you uh, paints uh, just to practice, like regular acrylic paints from Walmart or the art store, just to practice. But don't use acrylic paint on skin. That's not what that's used for. You're going to make someone break out, okay? Or on yourself. Mannequin, paper, no problem. But on real people, use face paints, okay? And then anytime you see brushes, I, I'm a fanatic of brushes. Just like Ziploc baggies, it's about the same addiction. Um, so with the brushes, whenever you see brushes at the dollar store, just because it's just for practice, I buy them from the dollar store. And typically they're pretty good. Like they're, they're, they're pretty decent quality. Okay. So build your collection.